Hey guys, so let's talk about linear equations. Linear equations can be an equation with variables to the first power, like 7x equals 21 and x over 2 minus 5 equals 31. They can also contain more than one variable, like 3x plus y equals 16. So solving for a variable when an equation has more than one variable. The way to go about doing this is to solve for one variable in terms of the other variable. So for instance, we have 12x plus 2y is equal to 18. What is y minus 2? What we have to do here is solve for y in terms of x on this side and then substitute that value into the y here in order to get what y minus 2 is. So starting on this side, let's isolate the y. We need to subtract 12x from both sides and we get 2y is equal to 18 minus 12x. And then we need to divide by 2 on both sides in order to get y. So 18 divided by 2 is 9, 12 divided by 2 is 6, and we get left with y is equal to 9 minus 6x. Now we take that value, plug it up here, and we get 9 minus 6x minus 2, 9 minus 2 is 7, and we get left with 7 minus 6x. So the last example has a polynomial, 12x plus 2y. All polynomials are are terms and expressions that contain variables. They can be manipulated in several ways. So for instance, they can be added together here, 2x plus y plus x minus 9y. All you need to do is add 2x plus x, which gets you 3x. y minus 9y gets you minus 8y. So this simplifies to 3x minus 8y. You can subtract them, 2x plus y minus x minus 9y. First thing you would need to do is distribute the negative sign through the x minus 9y, which gets us negative x plus 9y. And this simplifies to 2x minus x, which is x, and y plus 9y, which is 10y. They can be multiplied together, xy times x squared plus y. So x squared times xy would get you x cubed y. All you do is add the exponents together. So x to the first plus x to the second, or the one plus the two gets you three. Plus, same concept here, we have y times y. So we get xy squared. And last off, you can divide them. 10x plus 2y divided by 2. And just simplify these out. 2 goes into 10, 5. 2 goes into 2 once. And you get left with 5x plus y. So I'm sure you may have encountered this topic in class before, but you can multiply polynomials by following FOIL, which stands for first or front, outside, inside, and last. So what that means is, you want to multiply the first terms together, x times 2x, then the outside terms, x times 1, then the inside, 2 times 2x, and then the last, 2 times 1. So what that would look like is, first, x times 2x, which is 2x squared, x times negative 1, which is negative, negative x, 2 times 2x, which is 4x, then 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. That simplifies down to 2x squared. We need to combine like terms, so we have an x and an x here. Negative x plus 4x is 3x. Negative 2 is left behind. So simplifying x plus 2 times 2x minus 1, we get 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. There are certain special cases when you multiply polynomials together where it's a little more straightforward. When you have like terms, x plus y times x minus y, you'll always get x squared minus y. That's because you'll multiply the x's together, you get x squared, multiply x times y, negative xy, y times x, which is xy, and y times y here negative y squared. So the negative xy and the positive xy in the middle will always cancel, which will leave you x squared minus y squared. 
Sometimes you'll need to factor a polynomial, and that's like finding the factors of a number. So if you were to be asked, what are the factors of 21, you would say 3, 7, 1, and 21, right? 1 and 21 are elements of 21. 3, 7 make up 21 as well. So if I were to ask you to factor 12x plus 3y, you just need to find common elements of both terms here. So 12x and 3y both share 3 as a factor. So if you factor 3 out, you get 4x here, because 3 times 4 is 12x, and you'd be left with y here. 3 times y is 3y. So you'd be left with 3 times 4x plus y. The same can be said for this last example, 12xy plus 3y. What are some common terms? Well, they both share y's, and they both share 3's. So if you were to take 3y out of the first term, you'd be left with 4x, and at the end, 1. Because 3y times 4x is 12xy, and 3y times 1 gets you 3y. So you're left with 3y times 4x plus 1. So to make things a little more complicated, sometimes you'll be given something like x squared plus 12x plus 35, and you'll be asked to factor it. So the way you go about doing this is kind of like a reverse FOIL. You'll need to take a look at the coefficient here and the, cofi and the number here. Coefficient of x is just 1. So 1 times 1 gets you 1, so you don't really need to worry about that. However, for the 35, you'll need to think about the factors of that. So it can be 7 and 5, or 35 and 1. Next up, what you'll need to do is cross multiply these coefficients by these numbers right here, or these numbers here, and find out when you add them together whether or not they add up to this number here, coefficient of x. So first off, we have 1 times 5, which gets us 5, 1 times 7, which gets us 7, add it up, that gets us 12. So we can forget the 35 and 1. So we know that x plus 7 times x plus 5 will get us x squared plus 12x plus 35. Next up, we have something a little more complicated, just an extra y tossed in. It just means that we need to take that into account when we take the factors. So since the y is distributed between these two terms, we know that we just need to include it, like in our previous example, with the secondary terms of 7 and 5. So we get x plus 7y times x plus 5y. Last up, we have x squared minus 9. Now, if you remember from our previous slide, we had x plus y times x minus y always gets us x squared minus y squared. So x doesn't have a coefficient in front of it, so we know that there should be nothing in front of the x term. And we know the second term will end up being negative y squared. We know that we have a 9 here. Break that out, we'd have 3 and 3. So x plus 3 times x minus 3 will get you x squared minus 9. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. Here's some questions if you want to go over some of the topics we just covered. And like always, give the video a like and subscribe, and feel free to leave comments and questions below.